Once upon a time, there was an old man who used to go to the ocean to do his writing every day before work. Early one morning, he was walking along the shore after a big storm had hit, and he found the beach littered with starfish as far as the eye could see, stretching in both directions. Off in the distance, the old man noticed a small boy walking in his direction. The boy walked, he paused every so often, and the man could see that he was repeatedly bending down to pick up an object and throw it into the sea. The boy came closer still, and the man called out, good morning, may I ask what it is that you're doing? The young boy paused, looked up, and replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them up on the beach, and they can't return to the sea by themselves. When the sun gets high, they'll die unless I throw them back into the water. The old man replied, but there must be tens of thousands of starfish on the beach. I'm afraid you won't be able to make much of a difference. The boy bent down, picked up yet another starfish, and threw it as far as he could into the ocean. Then he turned, smiled, and said, it made a difference to that one. This story has resonated with us here at the Patient Safety Movement since we began in 2012. Every one life matters, and zero preventable deaths is the only acceptable goal. It's this story that inspired us to create the visual display that you walked past on your way in today. The beautiful tree you see has a canopy of dangling lights for leaves that rise up from a reflective surface. These lights represent the lives lost in hospitals under preventable circumstances. The Alyssa Hemmelgarns, the Benjamin Kings, and the Sam Morishes. A mirrored ceiling multiplies the points of lights that go off into infinity. We hope that as you pass by, looking into the mirror, that your face will be added to the canopy of lights, reflecting the impact that you can have as a part of this movement. On the lower perimeter, you may have noticed origami starfish. We encourage you to leave messages or simply sign a starfish and place them onto the upper mirror surface, representing your ability to save a life. By the end of the summit, all the starfish will be saved, risen to the pool of lights. We thank each and every one of you for being here today. By gathering here today, you're making a difference. Before our founder and chairman, Joe Kiani, gets on stage to present the State of the Movement Address, I have a few exciting announcements about what you have to look forward to at the summit and some of the things that have been brewing over the last year since we last met. First, there are a few things going on, the, going on around the venue in addition to the visual display and the patient stories in the light boxes. We have a film crew here today and tomorrow capturing a closing video. We filmed a similar project two years ago in Dana Point and it quickly became one of my favorite videos. The video will play in a few minutes. So please, if you have two minutes between sessions, please visit Mark Lyon and his team. They'll be positioned in the south foyer in the wing by the ocean. You also may have noticed that when you walked in this morning, we've set up a quiet room so that if you need to take a moment to yourself during this busy weekend, you can retreat to a relaxing nook to unplug and reflect inward. The quiet room is located in the conference uh, room called Sunrise, which is near the business center. Each day during lunch, we're offering an additional networking opportunity where you can share your perspective no matter what type of stakeholder group you represent. In the Mariners Ballroom, where lunch will be held, we encourage you to sit at tables that are de dedicated to discussing each of the actionable patient safety solutions we've developed. This is your opportunity to have a voice at our meeting. Our workgroup chairs will be lightly facilitating a conversation around how to implement these solutions and how to take action. So please consider networking around hospital adoption of these processes and how to popularize our apps. We won't be editing them or revising them, but just drop in on one or more tables to share your perspective. We'll, uh, we'll have dedicated tables for each apps split between today and tomorrow. You don't have to sign up, just drop by one of the tables that have a number on a stand corresponding to the apps. Today we're gonna be focusing on apps number one through nine. Tomorrow will be number 10 through 18. Check out our mobile app for a detailed description of the topics. Speaking of our mobile app, we've created a free mobile event app that allows you to keep up with our summit program, as well as connect with one another. Not only can you view the detailed agenda, but you can also find information on your favorite speakers and our event sponsors. You can send other attendees messages and even requests to schedule a meeting with them while you're here on site. 
You can also post on the activity feed, your social news feed. And last but not least, my personal favorite feature, interact with our panelists. Each moderator of our panels will be equipped with an iPad, use our mobile event app to submit your questions virtually, and the moderator will pull those questions during the Q&A session during the last 10 minutes of each panel. To download the app, go to the App Store on your mobile phone, search for World Patient Safety Summit, and you'll see our Dotman icon for you to click. We're also really pleased to announce that we've released a mobile app called Patient Safety Solutions, which has our actionable patient safety solutions, better known as our apps, loaded for quick and easy viewing. We wanted to call it the Apps app, but that's confusing enough. But now our apps are truly digital. So if you work in a hospital, please encourage your leaders, your unit managers, to download the app and view the topics that relate to the care they're providing patients. They can use the executive summary checklist to self-assess whether your hospital is really hitting every single checkbox. With this app, the processes that can save lives are always in your pocket, just tap away. Let's focus a little bit more on our apps. So in the last 11 months since our summit in London, we've worked harder than ever before to refine our actionable patient safety solutions, the clinical evidence-based best practice documents I keep mentioning. And we're excited to announce that today you can order the first ever printed volume of apps. We've heard from hospital administrators, CEOs, CMOs, and CNOs that having these apps in print ready to pull off their bookshelves will be helpful to reference and pass along to their quality and patient safety committees working on improvement projects. So we listened, and now all 471 pages addressing medication safety, embolic events, handoff communications, and obstetric safety, just to name a few of the challenges, can be ordered. We're also excited to announce that our 17th apps called Patient Safety Curriculum for Schools is also being launched today. So please stop by the table near registration to fill out a card so we can mail you all 17 of our apps. And don't worry, we won't make you carry all 500 pages home in your suitcase. Also, the authors of a newly released curricular resource called OK to Proceed will be signing their book in the foyer next to the registration desk. The books have been, been kindly donated, so there's no cost, so please pick up a copy and chat with the authors. Prompted by President Clinton, who's now our honorary global chair, we formed regional networks in 2016 to help spread our mission of zero preventable deaths by 2020 across the globe. Since then, we've been growing slowly and steady. We now have over 35 representatives across 17 countries who are waving the patient safety movement's flag, spreading our mission and our resources to hospitals, other nonprofits, med tech companies and policymakers, and raising awareness among patients and families. So please, it doesn't matter whether you want to help on the micro or the macro scale, we need your help to reach more hospitals and save more lives. A few highlights of our regional network chairs include this year, our chair, Dr. Chan Lau, who brought over 10 representatives along with him to our summit, and even arranged a tour with UCI Health to promote shared learning between hospitals he's brought. And Dr. Davila in Mexico has worked hard this year to re-engage partners within our network. He's been a great help in getting new hospitals in Mexico on board bringing in over 30 hospitals in Mexico since the launch of the Regional Network Chair Program. Dr. Davila is always finding new opportunities to spread our vision of zero um, across hospitals in Mexico. If you're interested in getting involved, you'll find a card that looks like this and in your backpack and you can sign up. Please drop it off at the registration desk and Sarah, our partnerships manager, will contact you after the summit. And lastly, many of you are here because you've made commitments on behalf of your hospitals telling us what you're doing to help us get closer to zero by 2020. If you haven't made a commitment yet, please fill out this card, include it in your backpack, and return it to the registration desk. We really need everyone to step up and take action this year. We don't have much time left before 2020 hits. Thank you.